Hello and welcome to the Chapter 2 podcast on Section 2.8, which is Naming Compounds. So let's go through these. Again, we're going to spend some time here, and we'll um, spend more time in, in class kind of putting these rules into, into action. For ionic compounds, it's important to distinguish between binary and ternary ionic compounds. A binary ionic compound is a compound that's composed of two different elements only. With ionic compounds, the metal will be first, or the cation, positive ion first, non-metal will be listed second. Now, you can, now, while the compound is made up of just two different kinds of elements, you can have more than two total atoms in the compound. Okay, so something like Fe2O3 could, would still be considered a binary ionic compound. Ternary compounds are ionic compounds composed of three or more different elements. Whenever you see three or more elements, there is a polyatomic ion involved, and uh, hopefully through your memorization, you'll be able to pick out where the where the uh, polyatomic ion is. The metals first, with the exception of ammonium and hydrogen. Um, Non-metal or anion will be listed second. Ninety-nine percent of the time, the non-metal or the anion was going to be the polyatomic ion. Poly, yeah. Polyatomic ion, I don't know, I lost my place. Uh, parentheses sometimes may be needed for polyatomic ions, so sometimes that makes it very easy to identify. So calcium hydroxide, you'd have this in parentheses. And the, remember, the purpose of this is to make sure that we balance charge for our compounds. Remember, all compounds ionic are electrically neutral. In terms of positive ions, um, cations, when we name them, have the same name as the original metal. So Na plus is still sodium. Zinc is zinc 2 plus. Aluminum is Al3 plus. However, if a metal is what we call polyionic, so it can um, have more than one charge, then what we use is the stock name. So basically, we put the magnitude of the charge in parentheses and indicating the magnitude of that charge by using Roman numerals. So for instance, iron 2 plus, sorry the formatting's not right on that one, we, when we name it is iron 2, whereas Fe3 plus would be iron 3. So the Roman numeral corresponds to the magnitude of the positive charge. Um, cations from non-metal ions will always end in em. So NH4 plus is ammonium ions, and H3O plus is hydronium. Okay, but these don't really come up in most typical names, so don't don't stress on this much. It's the first two things that matter most. Um, here are some common uh, ions that are positive. Again, notice that we just add ion to the name of it, with the exception of ammonium and some other ones. You see here these Latin names. No one really uses them anymore. So just focus on the what we call the stock name. So the parentheses, Roman numeral again, corresponding directly with the charge. Uh, the ones that are in bold just happen to be ones that are more common. In terms of negative ions, negative ions always will end in IDE for anions. So hydride, oxide, nitride, hydroxide, and so on. Okay. Uh, polyatomic anions usually will end in 8 or it. Now the exceptions to that are these three uh, polyatomic ions. These are the only three that end in IDE. So hydroxide, cyanide, and peroxide. Whereas everything else will usually end in 8 or it. This is because of the oxygen that they all have in common. Uh, let's see. Anions that have an H added to it um, can have hydrogen or dihydrogen depending upon what we're talking about here sometimes they use bi instead so in other words CO3 2 minus is carbonate but if you add an H plus to it it's still a polyatomic ion now and now it's called hydrogen carbonate or sometimes bicarbonate whereas uh, see how uh, we, phosphate would be PO4 3 minus H PO4 2 minus would be hydrogen phosphate, but if you had two of them, now it's dihydrogen phosphate. Okay.
And again, these were on your list. So it's kind of like a review. Um, here are some common anions. And then here they kind of list some of the um, some of the polyatomic ions as well. And they kind of go through the naming system in terms of uh, how many oxygens they have. Okay. Um, in with respect to ionic compounds, the names of ionic compounds will always consist of the cation and then the anion. Um, CaCl2 would be calcium chloride. AlNO3 3 would be aluminum nitrate. Now, there's notice how we don't use um, any prefixes or anything like that. So it's only just the name of the anion. We don't indicate how many of them there are. So notice how this is not dichloride. Do not use prefixes for ionic compounds. Okay. And remember, calcium, remember, was originally just calcium ion, so that's the name of the ion. And chloride is the name of the ion for uh, Cl when it ionizes. So chlorine would be the element that's neutral. Chloride indicates that it gained an electron, and now it has a, has a negative one charge. And then here, the one important difference to list here is this is a ternary compound again, because um, it's made up of more than three different kinds of atoms. Whenever you have your metals that can be that can have more than one charge, you have to indicate what form of copper you have by using the Roman numeral and the with parentheses. Now, how did I know that this was copper two and not copper three? We can look at the perchlorate and uh, and deduce what the charge is. So, for instance, remember every ionic compound has a net charge of zero. Chlor uh, perchlorate, as you memorize, has a negative one charge, right? And we have, based upon the number outside of the parentheses, we know we have two of them, right? So the overall negative charge is negative two based upon the two chlorates that are present in this formula. Now, copper's positive charge has to cancel that out. So what plus negative two equals zero? Positive two. Okay? So keep that in mind. So remember, net charge is zero for chemical formulas. And these numbers in the subscripts for formulas indicate the ratio necessary for the net charge to cancel each other out or add up to zero. Okay, so for instance, if we have barium and hydroxide, this hydroxide, this whole thing has a negative one charge. The barium has a plus two charge. So if I want this charge to balance, I need two hydroxides for every one barium so that the net charge adds up to zero, and that's represented by BaOH2. Now, for polyatomic ions only, if, if we need more than one of them, we put, we use parentheses. If we only need one hydroxide, then we wouldn't, then we wouldn't use parentheses. Naming acids. Okay, acids are special in the sense that they have hydrogen as the cation, Okay, so they have acids. We're actually going to spend a few chapters on on uh, acids because they have they have ionic and some uh, some some of them have molecular properties too. So it's kind of like their own unique little thing. When we name acids, they're based upon uh, the the name of the anion. So if the anion ends in IDE, we had hydro and ic. If the anion ends in, in, in ATE, we had ic only. And if the anion ends in ITE, we had OUS. And of course, we'll add, when we do the formula of an acid, we add H plus to our anions to make sure we have uh, a net charge of zero, just like we do for other ionic compounds. Okay? So for instance, H, if I have an acid, uh, Wow, this is really messed up. Uh, H plus and CO three two minus would combine to form H two CO three. This three should be in the in the subscript, okay? Because you need two H pluses. The CO three, the whole thing has a negative two charge, so that's why you need two H pluses to cancel out the charge uh, of the carbonate. For molecular compounds, for now the only molecular compounds we're going to learn how to name are binary ones. So this these are. 
molecular compounds consisting of only two different kind, uh, two different elements. Okay. Uh, when we when we name uh, molecular compounds, the name of the element farther to the left is always usually written first. Uh, if uh, if they're both in the same group, then the higher one is named first. The second element will end in IDE, and here is why here is here's where we actually use prefixes so we only use prefixes for molecular compounds we never use prefixes like this for ionic ones ever okay so that's why we don't use them for ionic otherwise we it'd be too difficult to tell the difference between an ionic and a molecular compound and we will practice a lot in class so until next time